Hello and welcome to Azaz. That's Ask Zanata Anything About Zoho. This is uh, Volume 1, Issue Number 20. 20 weeks we've been doing this for. Uh, um, it seems like it was just yesterday when we had the idea for this show and Greg was running around screaming Azaz at the top of his lungs. Um, and here we are. It was are. like uh, like Archimedes naked through the streets. I was just... And- Running down my neighborhood. Azaz, 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 Azaz. Yeah, yeah. Will Ferrell in uh, Old School, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Those are yeah. those are two equivalent characters in yeah. scenarios, yeah. Will Ferrell is basically anyway, our modern-day Archimedes. That's it. Well, hey, I'm Brett Martin, and that is Greg Belknap. And uh, over there is uh, Tyler Colt. And then we've got Wayne filling in yet again He's producing back back. and on the show back to back weeks. Freddie's off on jury duty, putting away some criminal because you know if the police arrested you, you're guilty. Okay, little boy. I mean, that's how it works in this country. <laughs> you know, little boy, little boy. Just ask, just ask Kevin Spacey. Um. So, <laughs> oh my and here's our monetization for this episode. There it goes. Do you see it? I see the monetization drifting away. Everybody, there, there all, it goes. All, You're all, all, Saying, you know what? I mean, I mean, how many more times could the guy be found uh, not guilty and uh, still not get his well, career back? Maybe because you know what? Because they arrested him, plus he was charged. Greg, nothing. Did Greg freeze I, or is he? I can't. No, I mean, I'm, 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 I mean, I mean, I, I mean, yes, I did freeze, but not technologically, <laughs> just emotionally and spiritually. Uh. <laughs> All right. Well, we are like several minutes in and we've yet to answer a single question. Let's get right to it. All righty. First question, I think, is for me. So there's a question that Katie Kelly asked on YouTube uh, in response to our video, Zoho subscriptions, products, plans, coupons, and add-ons. So the question is, if I set a Zoho subscriptions coupon to forever, will that apply the same discount each month automatically? So yes, it will. Uh, Coupons can be set uh, a couple different ways. They can be a one-time, you know, so if you want to give someone a discount on the first month, um, you can have them recur for a certain amount of charges. So, you know, three if you wanted the first quarter to be, you know, at a discount, or you can just set it to forever, which will just keep that discount on every single charge on that subscription unless you update it in some way. Um, so yeah, you'll be good to go if you just set the coupon to forever. It will uh, stick around until you tell Zoho otherwise. What? Well, no banter? No banter? It just goes straight into me. I had some banter there. You know what? I was thinking, Tyler, on these cases, we should um, we should have multiple choice like on this, and let's see if we can guess it correctly, right? Like if you're doing it and none of us know the answer, you know, yes, no, maybe, and we can just kind of take a guess and see which one, you know. Like a little poll, a little interactive thing. See how that mm-hmm. goes there. The problem is anyway, I know so everything. Yes. So I would always get it right. That's the problem. Oh. Ouch. Wow. Boy, hey, boy, great. Boy. Let's put that to the test next week, all right? See what we can come up with Sounds there. Sounds good to me. You wrap yeah. around. I'll answer all of them, man. We'll get through this thing in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That next question from Paul <laughs> Webb. Paul asks, as a member of... A member of staff recently decided to create an envelope template for some good old snail mail. We wanted to use the customer's salutation and surname, but only the first letter of the first name. What suggestions do you have? Well, Paul, there's a couple of things you could do with this. Um, and by the way, I don't, I, I, this, the answer to this was written for me by Tyler. So, I mean, I, I don't even know why I'm speaking. It's just so I can get some airtime here. I think a little um, bit of Greg on that but, one, too. I gave you the short answer, and someone <laughs> expanded it a little bit. There's a lot of ways. And I and I knew these because I know everything, Tyler. Uh, honestly, Paul, here's what you can do. You can, uh, you can write a custom function, but that's probably going to require you hire someone to, to do that for you, unless you can do it yourself, or go watch some of Greg's fantastic uh, videos on how to write custom functions. You can write one that basically does that for you, right? So that it just automatically goes through and you have a a field called first initial and it runs through and it grabs the first letter from everybody's first name and it it create, you know, it puts their their initial in there. Um, You could also 
write a formula field. So again, you'd create a new field called first initial, and we're actually going to put the string that you will need to, to drop in that formula field that will do exactly the same thing. Um, and that's just going to pull the first letter in there and do that. We have, sometimes we get formula fields for people want to know the month and they really just want to have like a number for the month. So we'll kind of do that. And that's an easy way to do it. But if you do that, um, you're either going to have to open edit and save every single one of your current people in order for that to happen, or you're going to have to write a custom function that's going to go through and create that first letter for you there as well. Um, so those are a couple ways you can do it. You could also do a client script, um, which would be every single time you automatically create a record, it's just going to do it automatically and put it there. It's just kind of another, another that's JavaScript instead of deluge in that case to, to make that work for you. Um, so again, though, even if you did that, you're going to have to go through and, you know, and do it to every single record going forward. So, uh, you know, a couple ways of doing it, not that hard. The simplest way you could easily do it yourself, especially since, uh, we're going to post the, the code you need for the formula field would be to do that. Um, and I don't know if there's a way to force, I seem to remember guys that you could go through, select a hundred records, do like mass update. You have to do some silly stuff. Change, so change, Greg, change one wrong. field. You right. have to, it has to be a field that's involved in the formula. So I'm pretty sure what we used to do for that is you set up like a checkbox field and then you do an if statement in the formula. So if checkbox is true, then first initial, else <laughs> first initial. So like regardless of if All the right. checkbox or not, it's doing the same thing. Then you can mass select the checkbox and run updates to pass the data through. Um, honestly, right. though, a custom function, if you use that, then you could just export it all to CSV and import back in to fill in that field. That might be easier, save a little time, but uh, yeah, a couple options. Mm -hmm. All right. Our next question comes from uh, Ronel Prickett over at Club Zanata uh, asking, are there any tutorials or automation examples that I can review to assist me with figuring out why an automation has stopped working. Uh, and over at uh, Club Z, uh, Ronell went into a lot more detail on the particular uh, automation that had stopped working. Uh, I went uh, answered uh, some of these specific questions that they had over at uh, Club Z, but I thought this would be a really good question to uh, show just a few uh, spots in the CRM where you can uh, do a little bit of error checking yourself, see if maybe you can figure out uh, why something is going wrong. So I actually uh, have a screen share. So inside of uh, your setup, you have uh, developer space as one of the uh, spaces over here, and then you have uh, functions. So you've got uh, this little tab up here that's listed as failures. So here you can click and see uh, functions that have been messing up, erroring out. Uh, now, there is a possibility that a function might be erroring, but not showing up here. But uh, this is a good spot to check first. Uh, you can go over here and select to list only workflow rule failures. And the thing that's nice about this list here is that you can see when something went wrong and uh, more importantly, what record it failed on, right? Uh, then if you go to uh, a particular uh, workflow rule, there's a blue button up here called View Usage. And you can click on that and also see uh, if there have been any uh, function failures here, right? Then what you can do is for a particular uh, function, you can go into the editor here. And now I know this bit looks really scary, uh, but what we're going to talk about is just something called info statements, right? So you can look for them. There's just the word info and then the name of some variable that's somewhere in the code. Odds are, if somebody else wrote the code for you, they probably have some info statements in there already. Uh, but those info statements just don't always surface on uh, the failure logs. Uh, so if you go to the particular record that something failed on, you can usually find uh, an ID number up here in the URL that hey. the code can run on. Click this Save and Execute button, and there'll usually be a prompt to put in that ID number. Then when you do, 
any of those info statements that the coder put in are going to show up on uh, this left hand or this right hand side on this console. Now, obviously, there's a lot of different stuff going on here, uh, but uh, you may be able to get a better sense of what's going wrong with something if you just add more uh, of these lines that say info and then the name of one of these variables. I can guarantee you can't break code by just adding an info statement. Uh, so obviously, if you uh, have trouble reading this, then that's a whole other tutorial. But uh, this may be something that can at least get you a better sense of what might be going wrong. Is a field missing uh, data or is uh, is an update not liking the type of date time that's going in? Something like that. So obviously big old can of worms, but uh, just thought this was a uh, good little tutorial uh, that uh, you guys might be able to find useful if you feel like delving into the rabbit hole that is uh, your backend deluge. Wow. So do you feel a, would that be a really solid way of doing it? Or would it be like a, when you, if you were to build it that way, Greg, would it be a house of cards? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, you know, oh, I mean, oh, yeah. it's, well, I mean, you know, well, it's just the info state. Like I just wanted to kind of go through the usual suspects of, huh. uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Of different yeah, ways. That back. You, that brought it back. Yeah. Uh, Good. Yeah. Let's check your check your functions. And the big one too is running those infos on any of the lines that are doing actions, like creating a record, updating a record, because it'll tell you like, hey, mandatory field is empty. You know, date value mm -hmm. is formatted incorrectly. Like it'll tell you what's wrong when you're trying to create records, and that's uh, oftentimes a good yeah. place to work work backwards from the, there, the, right? Yeah. Keep an eye and out Rinell, for any you're... lines. Sorry, just any lines that have the Zoho.crm dot whatever. Uh anything anything that's labeled as that, whatever whatever the the name of that variable is, make sure there's an info for that to see what it says is happening. The code looks like it's from KPAX. Yep. Hey, and and Renell, one last thing with that. Uh, just make sure you drink plenty of coffee when writing deluge code because you don't want to get spacey or anything like that, okay? All right, so Beat Z, uh, we have some space. How funny. Uh, he's over on Club Z, old Beat Z is. Um, I love every time he asks a question. And he uh, wants to know about sharing articles in Zoho Learn. And he says, we have a space, which in Zoho Learn is a, an area where you keep various Learn articles and such for each department and added users to each space in Zoho Learn. If we create a new manual and forget to share it with the members of the space, nobody sees it is there a way to automatically share all manuals with all users added to the space the manual belongs to no <laughs> sorry it's really unfortunate bz uh you can't uh you can't do that you you uh you're gonna have to just remember to share it um it's just not set up that way um so that uh, it seems like it should be though guys didn't it or you should, it, and there's nothing we can do there there's no nothing that can automatically check and design there's no not right now Zo um i'll keep uh i'm gonna keep uh bugging the the zo people like brett the same way that uh for you your white whale was getting a uh, notebook and so crm to just talk to each other the way you wanted for me it's Open up Zoho Learn APIs. Let us let us work in Learn via via code. And so is there, can, there, there's oh they're not open at all right now. Correct, correct. Nope, nope. I even I've even hit up uh, people on their um, you know development teams, and uh, and they don't have any any roadmaps for right now of when uh, when or if they're going to release that that API, but. Uh, Boy, I sure would like them to. Be a real yep. American beauty. Yeah. All righty. Next question here comes from Steve. You asked us over on uh, Club Zanata in the Q&A. Uh, post title is, what is the best practice? 
Um, so it's all related to CRM. Um, so I'm starting to use workflow rules to automatically update fields based on a selection. I'm concerned that I might end up tripping over with one workflow changing a field that is the trigger for an unrelated workflow. So a daisy chain effect. Uh, is there a best practice for keeping track of the fields that are being changed and potentially a trigger? Um, so I'm going to kind of answer this in two parts. To directly answer your question at the end, is there a best practice for keeping track of those fields uh, that are changed via workflow or where that field triggers a workflow? No, uh, there is not really any place that Zoho gives you a consolidated list uh, where those fields come into play. Um, the only time that it will actually tell you a field is used in a workflow is if you try to delete it. Um, then it will tell you that it's connected to all these various workflows. Um, so if you're listening, there should probably be a button on a field that shows you that. Um, but needless to say, yes, yeah, so you can't you can't control that. Now, what you can do is get a good understanding of what types of updates will trigger follow on workflows and which ones won't. Um, so if you're using a workflow rule that's using a field update action where you're not coding it and just using the field update, let me know if I'm wrong here, guys, but those do not trigger workflows when you run Again. a field update to a record. Um, nope. Custom functions can trigger workflows. So if you're using like a Zoho.CRM.update record, um, and I think, Greg, you may have wrote the note. Maybe I'm wrong here, but I think I thought those triggered them by default. They, they changed no. that behavior a while back. Or is that just API calls, not the uh, built-in That's, functions? Yeah, the, uh, the built-in functions still do not automatically trigger workflows. What does is if you um, if you use yeah, the API calls to do a bulk update, then yes, that does trigger workflows by default. And you need to specify that you don't want it to. But using the zolos.crm.update record still does not trigger workflow rules by default. You have to add an additional parameter. Put that little that list, the array in the call itself with trigger, mm -hmm. you know, workflow, blueprint, approval. So you kind of have the modularity there if you're doing it with a piece of code. Um, but then, Steve, like the important thing to think about is like maybe that daisy chain should happen. Right. Like if, if something happens over here and it updates a field to say, you know, yes, and we have a separate workflow where when that field is set to yes, it sends an email. I have to consider, is that a bad thing? Right. Because that field is, in fact, set to yes. So if there's normally a workflow that fires it off, maybe it's not the worst thing if it kicks it off. That's for you to decide. Right. But yeah, you've got options. If you don't want it to trigger, just leave that part out. Um, if you do want it to trigger, you'll just need to use a function and include the little uh, list array in the update or create record line. Bit of a margin call there, right? Yes. Yes. Let me out. Let me out here. All right. This question comes from uh, Jason Price over at Club Z uh, saying, I have a folder in my personal Google account that I would like to sync with Zoho WorkDrive. I'd like that folder and all the docs inside of it to be a folder in WorkDrive. Can that be done? And the answer is kind of. Uh, you, There is not a way to set up like a true like live sync. Um, like you can't like add, uh, you can, like uh, WorkDrive and Google Drive don't have a direct integration where like a live folder or document in one is visible in the other. Uh, they have migration options and import options, but it's it, it's copying the file. It's not creating uh, a live link. Uh, you could simulate it, though. Uh, there was actually a response to this in Club Z from one of our other users, uh, Stuart McKelvey. Shout out to, to Stu. Um, he suggested that you could use Zoho Flow to create a uh, sync when a particular file if a particular folder is edited to have a new file or a new folder in it you can have that then push from google drive to work drive into a particular spot um, and then you would need to have a the particular uh files that uh, he was talking about was uh google docs that would get updated regularly uh and so in that case you would need a second flow to run on if files in a folder get edited uh, to then keep that up to date. So a little little tricky, little workaround, and there is, you know, 
uh, room for uh, duplicates getting made or maybe some uh, things not quite being synced on time uh, or maybe something getting missed for some reason. But uh, a version of it is possible. Um, can Flo do you guys handle have the any... files themselves? Flo can take the files. Yeah. I thought Flo couldn't do any like files or attachments when we're running through Zoho Flow. Unless you like query uh, it back with Deluge and then add it. Uh, yes. Yeah, sorry, that's I did leave that part out. Yeah, there would it's need to be Deluge some, in the flow. some Deluge inside of the flow. Yes, got it. I mean, really, isn't the best advice though? Like, pick one or the other. I mean, not to like, not to not answer the question, but like, if you've got like file management and Google Drive and file management and Work Drive, like keeping those in sync, especially because you're mentioning Greg, like this is a Google Doc; it's going to get updated all the time. Like. I'm doubtful, <laughs> you know, it might work 80, 90% of the time, but it seems like it will cause you a lot less pain and suffering just to rip the mandate off, right? And and move over and just use work drive or just stick with Google drive. Cause that just seems like a path that's well, it seems with like though his, his thing here is he's just got a, he's got a personal folder, right? It's just, he's got this one little folder and it's a personal <laughs> folder and he wants to, you know, share that stuff over. So it's like a really... I, I agree with you though, Tyler. It's like you should just go one because yeah, they make, make personal folder and they work make a migration. They make a migration tool already, right? I mean, yeah. so has that full migration tool. So I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. But anyway, the um, you know, the yeah. uh, in Jason's particular uh, instance, he's using uh, the the drive along with uh, Google Books because uh, Google Books has a really cool thing where as you like highlight text or make notes while you're reading a Google book, it automatically generates a Google doc that compiles all of your notes that and highlights oh. into like a single document that keeps getting updated. So he was just hoping that that could be visible also in, in work drive. Uh, so the other, yeah. the only other thing that I can think of is that in your, in work drive, you yeah. create a, uh, a Zoho writer doc that you just drop, uh, a hyperlink into for your personal Google folder so that then if you want it's like okay I want to go I want to go back to that I'm in work drive wow. click on that doc click on that link open it in a new tab and now I'm in Google Drive all right so cool. Wayne looks like he uh, just like the, the the cat that just ate the canary so what other obscure reference are we about to drop in here as we move well, to the I last was just what? going to say the last question, let me pay it forward and I will take this one. And then time well, for the, you big, do, the big kahuna here. The uh, big kahuna, you're you're actually hang on, hang on. Before you do, but before you take this question, this is question number seven. Seven. It happens to be our last we got we got three yeah. references right there. Pay it forward seven and the big kahuna. <laughs> very, very nice. All right, Stuart Nikelvi over on Club Zenata in reference to campaigns and CRM best practices. I'd love to know more about the best practices related to integration campaigns with Zoho, or integrating campaigns with Zoho CRM. As the new sync is by default one directional, I'm curious if you recommend customers keep track of things like topic references, email validation, check fields, etc within CRM and push to campaigns, or if it's just easier to keep this purely within campaigns. Um, so I know you did, requested a video on this, Stuart, and we've got a handful of videos on this, but ideally you want to keep everything inside of Zoho CRM. And you would want to segment based on the CRM fields, um, but I find for your topic management, it's almost easier if you keep your topic simple, like let's say we have newsletter and promotions, and go ahead and assign um, everyone to those two topics. And the newsletter people, let's say they came into your CRM through some sort of form. There's a hidden checkbox field that associates them to your newsletter. Those people you would segment by that field inside the CRM. But let's say rather than them opting out with your topic management, um, if you had multiple topics, if they wanted to no longer receive your newsletter, but maybe they want to know there's like a 50% off deal or something. If you had your topics cleaned and assigned to everyone, they could just unsubscribe from your newsletter, but still get other promotional emails. Obviously you can have a lot more topics. than this. So 
For now, I would recommend keeping all of your data clean within the CRM and then managing it from the CRM and just using those filters and campaigns that campaigns currently has to offer um, and go that route. So I'll go ahead and drop some links to on Club Zenata for other videos and references that kind of relate to this. Tyler, you got really anything you want to add on? Really should show that stuff in CRM, you know? So we'll do another yeah. Zoho if you're listening, right? Like, you really should be able to open up a contact and see that they were associated with these four topics and they unsubscribed from one of them. You know, you should probably also be able to see they're in this workflow right now. You know, they're going to get an email tomorrow, things like that. Um, so yeah, Stuart, not a crazy question, right? When, cause we would kind of think like no. some of this stuff really should, should be work. a little more transparent in CRM. And even topic um, management. I mean, just seeing what topics they unsubscribe from, you know, you got to go into each individual record. There yeah. is no topic view inside the contacts yeah. module. And if I'm a campaign. salesperson, right. And like, let's say we're doing scoring, right. And now this contact has enough score for me to call them. It's actually really helpful for me to know they unsubscribed from this product related mm -hmm. topic, but not these two. Right. So when I call them, I'm not going to talk about the product they unsubscribed from. Um, so yeah, there's, a lot of value there, unfortunately. That's well, and I think I'm trying to, you know, well, Wayne and I were talking the other day. It's, you know, is marketing automation really going to be released? I mean, it seems to have gone Wait. quiet, right? Like this is, they're not even talking about it. And yeah. that was the one that was going to solve for a lot of this. And is it replacing campaigns? Yeah. Is it not? And it seems like they fixed some issues with campaigns around this sync. But, um, so this is a major product in your portfolio and you got to, we kind of got to get it together. Yeah. Um, I mean, across the marketing yeah. stack in general, you know, there's, there's certain deficiencies, <laughs> right? Like a lot of these applications are missing integrations for Zoho forms, right. To like de-anonymize web visitors when they land for things like page send sales IQ. So marketing automation, if I remember correctly, it was supposed to be the big umbrella, right. Where campaigns, right. sales IQ and page <laughs> sense kind of get rolled together into a suite and are supposed to work together a little bit better. Um, we've seen lots of improvements across the marketing suite, but there's these certain little things that seems like they just got to get yeah. done. And I days. feel like things are, they're getting ready to do some big growth because I'm noticing things aren't working the way they should, that they used to work. I'm kind of thinking they're doing some big changes on their back end or preparing for some big changes, which is why some of these things aren't necessarily working how they should. But yeah, I'm with you. And I work in the marketing and uh, suite and sometimes I just feel like I'm swimming with the sharks. So, <laughs> hey, shout out to uh, to to Wayne for not only producing the show, answering a question, but managing to come up with five hundred different Kevin Spacey references uh, during uh, uh, during. I'm a big the Kevin show. Spacey fan, so I found that out there. Yeah. That, that is what yeah. that is what uh, Wayne is best known for in the company. It's undying it's, support it's, of yeah. Kevin Spacey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm. Uh, yeah, anyway, I, I, I'm glad we're wrapping up the show because I got to head up to L.A., but let's just keep that confidential, okay? All right. So, with that, if anybody would like to, after this show, if you want to talk to us, which means you know, we, we know you're crazy, but we're happy to chat with you, you can just uh, head on over to Zanata.com and click on Book a Meeting, and we'll be happy to chat. On the website is where you'll also find full episodes of our podcast, The CRM Zen Show, where we cover all the news in the world of Zoho every single week. Uh, if you want that news delivered to your inbox, uh, as you may be tired of hearing us talk, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and we'll shoot that over every single Monday. And if uh, you have been uh, experiencing some uh, automation hiccups or your code isn't working quite right and it just feels like uh everything is your code is just living in a bug's life uh then head on over to club.zanata.com where uh we do code shares uh you can chat with other uh zoho users zoho developers uh yeah join our join our community and if you're a working girl or boy uh head over to zanata.com forward slash training and uh, we'll get your whole team trained up on both Zoho CRM and projects. And stay tuned because we also have Zoho Desk and the marketing suite coming soon as well.
And I think that's going to wrap as it always, up, guys. As always, we'd appreciate if you would like and subscribe here on YouTube, as well as your choice of podcast app. We'll see you next Wednesday. Thank you.